Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I think you know that my name is Sana, so let's get started with our science. Today's topic we're going to talk about is sound. We're going to do so many experiments with sound and work, and then you're going to learn so much about it. Before we start, start with our video um, of sound, um, I wanted to show you something. Let's listen. It's getting louder. Now it's just going down the ladder and it's not louder now. So why did that happen? When I put the phone in, the music got louder. And when I took it out, it, the, the music it just didn't get that loud. That's sound. We're going to talk all about it today. And at the end, we'll know. Let's talk about how sound works. How sound works is the air molecules. When you're saying something, the air molecules have this movement and then it'll go, go, go until it reaches your ear. The ear will pick the message up. And what does that mean anyway? It doesn't even make sense. So I'm going to show you this. For example, I'm moving my guitar. I'm playing a tune in it. And then when it moves, the air particles around it, it's also causing them to move. They're just moving and then they move. and then when they're going, they make another to move, another and another. It's almost like an ocean wave until it reaches my ear. And then in your ear, there's something called ear drum. The ear drum will go inside your ear. Then it'll go to a certain place where it'll say to your brain, she's hearing something. And the brain will say, she's hearing herself play the guitar. So if you don't if you don't have a guitar at home, if you have a rubber band and a can, you can use that to make your own musical instruments. Put put the um rubber band over here and then um and then you can pull it over here and there. We made our own musical instruments. Let's try it out like a guitar. It makes a sound like a guitar. Whoa, we made it a musical instrument. So with this, so just like the guitar, if I do like, if I just pull it so fast, it makes a louder sound. If I pull it slowly, it makes a lower sound. Um, so just like the guitar, so when I pull it like this, the air particles around it, they were still. But now because I moved it, they're also moving like an ocean wave. They reach my ear and then my eardrum tells my brain, and then my eardrum goes inside my ear. It tells my brain and the brain says what I am do hearing and where I'm hearing it from. That's how this instrument works. This is our next experiment. So, so do you notice I have three tubes. Every one of them has different amounts of water. Let's see what happens if I blow them. <sighs> Didn't you see? There were so many different sounds. So what happened there is when we heard that sound, what happened is when I blew it, the movement of the air molecules, they went like an ocean wave, like I said, and then they went into the tube, and, and then when they went, they went to the air in the tube, and then finally they came to the water. The sound is different because when, um, when it hits, when it goes through the um, air, it makes a sound, and when it goes through the water, it makes another sound. So sound can travel through wood, it could travel through air, it could travel through water. For example, let's say there's two rooms. One room is closed, so is the other. And then one person in that room is calling to another. Maybe he's saying, I'm going to the kitchen to cook something for lunch. Um, the sound waves will travel. It could travel through the air. It'll travel through the door, to, through the wooden door. And then, then again, it'll go through the air. And finally, it'll reach the other rooms. And it'll travel through the wood into the person's eardrum. I mean ear. 
Have you ever heard something like following you, like saying something? Like sometimes when I go out for walks, I say something really loud and I hear someone copying me. That is an echo. So when the sound waves, they go down and they get hit by something and they ba- bounce back up. That's an echo. So and then we and that's why we hear it again. So this is one cool fact. It's all about bats. Bats hunt in the night. It's pretty dark at night, so I don't think they can see. They make a sound every time they hunt, and then they wait for the sound wave to come hit them back. And then depending on that, they all know. Okay, so a object or a foot is really far away from me. Okay, it takes less time for this to come back to me. So I think、um, it should be very close to me, my foot or object. Remember we talked about infrared and ultraviolet that are. Our human eyes can't see, and other animals can see. Similarly, for f- sound, there's something called ultrasound and infrasound. Um,、uh, so we can't hear those too. Um, just like we can't see the other. So first, one of them is too volume down, and the other is too loud for ears to hear. So. Also, other animals they can hear it, and they could, and they use it to to say something to each other. Like, let's say some whales are hunting for food, and they see something coming to attack them. They use ultrasound or ultrasound to say to the others, "Oh, I think we shouldn't hunt for food here. I um, there's another attacking us. We better swim to another place to look for hunting food." So, how scientists detect how Big and steep the ocean is. They send ultrasound into the ocean, and then、um, it'll hit the sand and come back up. The time that it takes to come back up is how the scientists will figure out. Okay, so it's taking a very long time for this ultrasound to come back up. I think that the ocean is very deep and steep. So remember when we did the experiment? There was a fun music. We put it in here. It got louder, and we took. It, out, it just got lower. So now we're gonna. We knew why that was. It was because these two were acting like speakers. So what happened there was that the sound waves. It came over here and it bounced back up because of the cup's walls. One brilliant, cool fact is: remember in our last video about Margaret Hamilton? Um, remember I told you guys about Margaret Hamilton, and you might have known those um Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. One of them, when they landed on the room moon, I remember I told you one of them said, "One step for a man, one huge leap for mankind." One of them said that, and how did the other hear him say that? How did the other hear him? Because there's no air on the on space、um, on space or on the moon, and there's no sound waves on the moon also. So how did、um, the other hear? That's because in their helmet where they have air, they also have a radio phone to talk radio phone to talk to each other. So when they talk inside their helmet, the、uh, so the、um, radio phone it picks up the、um, sound waves. It converts them into electromagnetic waves. We already know what those mean. We talked them about them in one of my other videos. So, and that's how they can talk to each other in space. So ultraviolet waves are everywhere. The, the the ones that come from sun, and they can, they can live, they can stay without no air. So that's how they were able to talk in space. Bye, guys. This was the end of the video. See you in the next interesting video. Bye. I hope I and I hope you watched my others too. If you didn't, why don't you go back and watch them? Bye.